My name is Stephanie Endlich. I'm, uh, I work freelance in Berlin and uh, I'm uh, writing I, um, in uh, journals and I'm making books and also making exhibitions. Uh, for example, uh, in the last years, open air exhibitions on history and on art in public realm. And uh, I'm also teaching at the Berlin Josef University of Arts, uh, especially for art in public space. Every system had its own uh, art projects for memorials and monuments. And uh, I would not uh, see such a very close connection between uh, art and democracy. Artists have the chance to apply, to take part in a competition, and then uh, you have uh, several uh, different uh, um, ideas where a jury can uh, discuss on and uh, choose one of it uh, to be uh, built or to be realized. And I think this is the de democratic point. Without looking at the past, you cannot understand your presence. And um, for young people, it's uh, more and more difficult in all those uh, many informations that they get every day by, uh, from, from many sites and from the media and internet and, and so on, uh, to, uh, to know something about uh, history. And I think that um, the art in public space and the memorial places can offer a special entrance to the um, to the history of certain realms or of certain uh, uh, events. Maybe they can help to heal the wounds, but on the other side, uh, maybe also they keep the wounds open. Uh, because uh, this idea of uh, monuments he healing the wounds uh, is a very traditional idea, I think. Uh, of course, the, uh, one important aspect is always the comfort for uh, the families or for um, friends of those who have died, that those who have died are not forgotten. But for the society in general, uh, it's better not to say uh, the wounds are healed, uh, we uh, close uh, the door, we finish the topic, but uh, to get again and again with new questions from today, um, the look at history. And uh, I, th I think that's what uh, contemporary art can do very well, uh, to find new ways to connect uh, the dealing with the past, with problems we have today and our views from today. So uh, keeping, um, maybe not keeping wounds open, but keeping questions uh, open and uh, constantly open and uh, um, continuing dialogue on what has happened and trying to, to find new uh, views and new solutions. That's, that's more important than healing and finishing the story. Of course, uh, too many monuments in a close uh, space can be contraproductive. I see this uh, when I talk with my students. Uh, they often say, oh, Berlin is so full of monuments and memorial places, you cannot even breathe freely. <laughs> um, I think it is, it's relative. The concept of this first uh, large monument there was uh, to uh, concentrate uh, um, uh, the memory on uh, the Jewish victims uh, and uh, not to take uh, uh, into the project uh, the, uh, the victims of the other uh, racial persecution of the Nazis, like the uh, gypsies and like the homosexuals or the euthanasia victims. So 
the result of this very early decisions in the early 90s was that uh, near to this huge Holocaust memorial, uh, we find two, three, four, maybe soon five other memorials for other groups of victims of the national socialist uh, um, terror and persecution. And um, to understand why there are so many and so close together, you have to look and analyze the history of how it developed uh, the political decision for this place, the political decision for the concept of those uh, of, this, of those memorials. I think the decentralized memorials are at least uh, as much or even more interesting to understand history than uh, the real large ones we shall soon have and have al already started to have large memorial places and monuments for uh, the freedom uh, of the reunited Germany for the victims of Stalinism and early communist period in the former GDR. This will also come and uh, also come on a national level. It's also um, a problem that uh, when you try to create a monument or you try to decide about uh, art proposals in a competition, you always have this uh, event question in, in the background. Uh, how interesting uh, is it for the tourists? How um, c can it be uh, simple enough to be understood by many people? Uh, you know that uh, art, contemporary art is very often is uh, difficult and cannot be understood easily by people who are not um, familiar with, with art in general. The tourist aspect is uh, an aspect which is there. You have to, to look at it, you have to, uh, uh, to respect it, but it should not, it should not make the memorial places or the memorial art uh, easier and more uh, adventurous. Of course, politicians can manipulate history um, and memorial culture, maybe not in a very direct way because we live in a democracy, uh, but in, uh, in a in an uh, indir indirect, uh, intertwined way where uh, political uh, impulses uh, wander through the political institutions and uh, get um, uh, support, political support. You can uh, see this development very well with, with the future uh, Freedom Memorial, which will be built in maybe two years. Uh, we are talking about the step from the so-called negative memory to the so-called positive memory. But talking about negative memory, the word negative actually meant something positive. It meant that you uh, are... Uh, wise enough and strong enough to deal with the negative developments in history and uh, to, to deal with the crimes that have uh, happened in, in the Nazi time. What we have now is that people say, we don't want a negative culture anymore, we want a positive culture. It means identification, uh, our uh, uh, successes. Uh, memorial places have to show our successes. This is uh, this is different, and it. I think it will uh, give a large change in the next years, or it has even started to in uh, memorial culture. Uh, let me talk about uh, Germany and maybe also a little bit about uh, the East Eastern Europe countries. I think it's not a good solution to tear them down and to uh, um, make them. Um, 
vanish and be forgotten. But uh, all the monuments uh, show the view of a certain time. And when you look at those monuments today, you can understand how uh, uh, the time when they were created, uh, what ideas were important at that time, or how politics were working at that time. And of course, uh, for monuments uh, which were created in dictatorship and which show the official uh, view of uh, the system at that time, those monuments uh, can and must be uh, explained um, on different levels. Uh, we call it uh, historical commentation. We have a lot of uh, interesting projects which uh, uh, give commentations to existing memorials which uh, cannot very well be understood in the language of former times by uh, people today or especially by young people. And I don't know, uh, because uh, th this is a political decision. When you ask uh, people in Germany, they have never heard of this decision. Still in Germany we have the 27th of January as a day of remembrance for the Nazi victims. Uh, it's a day of liberation of Auschwitz. And um, I am very uh, skeptical about uh, the d development of the last years, trying to bring together um, the dictatorship experiences of Stalinism and National so Socialism in common memorial days and common memorial museums. I think it's a a step backward, or many step, steps backward to the times where um, memorial art and monuments concentrated of mourning the victims. This will, will be uh, the conception of the new day uh, of 3rd of August, the victims of the Stalin-Hitler uh, pact um, and the following years uh, could lead to the attitude uh, we are all victims, all the European uh, nations are victims of history, of dictatorship, but from Spain and France to uh, Russia and the Baltic states, I don't think this works. Um, it's a political construction which will not work. Initiative should uh, deal with concrete uh, topics and sites and historical events and then from there get uh, the uh, arrow to, uh, uh, to the general topics. That's better than the other way around. The other way around doesn't work very well.